Well, hello and very good morning to you all. Um, we're really busy this morning already. I just noticed on YouTube we are, are in Kentucky, we're in Italy, we're in Scotland, we're in Tynmouth. We're all over the place this morning. Um, and Alex, morning again, first in on Facebook too. Now, this is a half yard sewing club, live Saturday chat. We're here on the last uh, Saturday of every month. And we do a sew along. Hello, Stephen and Geordie Lan. Morning, Lisa. Um, hi, Anne. Hi, Heather and Jill and I think we're half a minute early as well things are going very smoothly this morning um morning oh Pamela's transferring to a laptop see in a second my voice is fuzzy don't know why we're okay at this end um morning Eva morning Jill hi Heather lots of you here so we've got 140 on Facebook already can't see how many on on YouTube at the moment. Anyway, we're going to have a little bit of a sew along as we do. And um, this is a request. And we're going to make a peg or a clothespin bag. Um, yeah, sorry about that. I, I promoted it as a, as a peg bag, thinking everybody knew what pegs were. But apparently in the States, they call them clothespins. And it was a little bit confusing as to what on earth we were going to make. It's ever so, ever so easy. Um, and you can make it with any size of coat hanger. This is the the one that I'm using, as long as it doesn't have a bar going across it. Well, you could, but then you'd have to rejig where the hole is and make it a bit lower down, otherwise you can have a bar straight across there. So that's what we're going to make shortly. Um, right, news-wise. Um, hi, Siobhan in Dublin and Eva. I'd love to say hello to as many as you have, as I can, but there's hundreds of you. Um, so I do apologise. If I miss any of your messages, I do go back through them later on and, and have a check. Um, morning from sunny Southampton. Pictures for my pi my picture's okay here. Everything seems to be going out fine from this end. Windy in Manchester. Uh, morning, Morag. Oh, thank you. 149 on YouTube. We're getting there, aren't we? Um, Doris is in New Jersey, Shirley's in Spain, Jack is in Worcester, <laughs> we're all over the place. Now then, half your club, if you weren't aware, or if you just happened upon us this morning, welcome along. Um, it, we have a, I say we, because it's not just me, it's a subscription website, and we bring you um, two projects a month, plus um, a block of the month, which this year is the seminal patchwork that you see behind me, or see a little bit behind me down there. Um, Christine, we do, we're doing more and more dressmaking, um, but I'm trying not to use patterns. So there are a few dressmaking things on there. There's lots of dressmaking hints and tips as well. In fact, there's a whole video um, where I make up a, a blouse. So it's the collars and the cuffs and the plackets and the putting the buttons on and the buttonholes and all that kind of thing. So that's something that's growing. But there's dressmaking, there's quilting, there's homewares, um, there's toys, there's bags, there's anything from tea cozies to bed quilts and everything in between. The two projects that we bring you each month, I try to make them very different. So for instance, um, last month was the sewing machine set behind me. So there was the dust cover, the pin cushion and the thread catcher. Um, and then the secondary project, I think that was Wonky Street cushion, wasn't it? So uh, very different. This month, or next month in April, I've been teasing you for ages to say that Wonky's gone 3D. We've got a Wonky doorstop. Oh, I, I love the. I had so much fun making these. You can see another one behind me that I got quite carried away. Now, because this is your main project, you get a video as well. So there's lots of hints and tips. Free, oops, it's free motion embroidered, as you can see. Um, so I've got lots of hints and tips for you for free motion embroidery. So if you haven't had a go before, then this is going to be ideal because everything's wonky. It's supposed to be wonky. It's not supposed to have straight lines anywhere. That's what wonky street's all about. It's got a zip in the bottom. So you can put a bag of, um, I've used pellets in here. It could be pebbles, could be sand. So you can put some kind of weight in the bottom um, to make it heavy enough to be a doorstop. But of course, it doesn't have to be a doorstop. It can just be an ornament. I'm, I'm fancying a whole row of, of wonky houses in all different colours. I think they'd look great in your um, in your sewing room. <laughs> oh, Dawn's on Facebook now. We're better on Facebook than we are in um, on YouTube at the moment. Sounds not too clear, says Jenny. 
love the way. I think I'm glad you like it. I'll try and talk a little bit clearer, but everything sound-wise and everything else is going out fine from this end. So I'm going to blame the internet if there's any kind of interference. Um, Oh, I'm glad you like it. I, I, I love it. So that's going to be your main project. But the secondary project, going back to dressmaking, um, we made, as oh, it was um, a year or so ago, the box top, which was a, a very simple um, T-shirt type of thing with, with no um, seams on the sleeves. We're going to have an adaptation of that. So I'm going to make it a little bit different, maybe a little bit more like this, but of, of course without the, the inset sleeve. So we're going to have a play with that. And then the month after, we're going to be making our own patterns for skirts. So yes, there will be dressmaking, going, going back off an hour. Um, but um, I'm trying to avoid using patterns because we're all different shapes and sizes. And it would mean that I've got to cover such a large range of sizes and grading and all that kind of thing. It would take ages. It'd be quite expensive and loads to download as well. So I think it's easier if you can kind of draft your own pattern and make something perfectly for yourself. Um, thanks Lisa my sound's absolutely fine here nothing's changed so if you're a little bit distorted I'm putting all the blame on you um, sunny and windy and hornsy oh thank you very much um, morning Salome oh Christine thank you I sound like I'm a bumblebee in a box Oh well, well I'm, I'm, I'm going to carry on anyway because um, I can't do anything about it at the moment. Um, yeah, there's lots of dress. There, there's, I think there's something for everybody. Oh, well, we've got Kimberly as well. Morning. Um, and I'm going to show you actually before we start sewing the way that the website actually works. So this is it. Um, now it's a monthly subscription. So in pounds it's five ninety nine a month. Um, wherever you are in the world, your your bank will convert that into the equivalent of five ninety nine a month, and it, you can be anywhere in the world, um, which is the beauty, isn't it, of having the internet and having downloads and having printers and the likes, because um, we don't have to post anything out, so we can keep the cost right down. But this is it. This is what happens when you log on. So that's obvious on on my site at the moment, and that's the home page. And, oh, actually, I'm on my sewing projects. So this is everything that you'll have. So the minute that you join, you'll have access to all of this. So you can see it's a wide variety. We've got the uh, reversible kimono jacket. It's been really, really popular. Can you see those OK? Craft apron, block of the month, pet bed. So all of these divs are wonky street look. Those are last year's block of the month. We've got the rag dolls. And all you need to do is to click on the project. And then you can download the instructions. You can download the pattern. Just click on these. So those are all of your instructions. Of course, you can print those off if you want to. And as you come down oh that was a secondary project so you don't get videos with the secondary projects but like with this one that's this month's project there's your video this month's project is a sewing machine dust cover and and part of the part of the body so i don't have a bitch i've actually glued into a now all of the projects will stay there for a couple of years so on the day that you join you have access to all of these projects so there will be including the block of month 36 projects in total which is pretty amazing isn't it so for your first payment of 5.99 you get all of this now we do an offer whereby um, you can have um, a month for free that is if you're going to pay monthly. If you're going to pay yearly, which is £60 a year, um, you're getting two months free anyway, so that offer isn't available if you're going to pay monthly. And um, whoops, that is WELCOME18 in capital letters, which I'm sure somebody will kindly pop on Facebook and YouTube for me. So WELCOME in capital letters, then 18. When you go through to checkout, use that code and you get a whole month for free, so you can come and have a try. 
Um, hello, Kate in New York and Sherry in Tennessee. Happy birthday, Ariana. Um, love the wonky door stop. Love, I'm glad you like that. Thank you very much, Alex. Um, Margaret in Wigan. First time writing. Welcome along. We want lots more of that, Margaret. Um, we're here with Half Yard Club on the last Saturday of every month, but I am on YouTube every Saturday at 11 o'clock in the morning and on my website as well. So we're, we're, we're all over that. We've got it. We've got it, all this social media stuff. Um, oh, is it nice when you wish each other happy birthday? And oh, um, First time watching Deborah in Massachusetts. Welcome along. Hopefully we'll get you hooked. Thanks, Lisa. Right, OK. Um, should we do some sewing? Because it is a sew along after all. Right. So, wonk can go there. There. Let's make this up. Ever so easy. Now, if you don't have a 17 inch uh, coat hanger like mine is, doesn't matter. I'll show you on a piece of paper how we're going to do this first of all. Um, so basically, you're going to take your coat hanger, piece of paper's not quite big, uh, big enough, um, and draw around it. So I'll do this on the fabric in a minute. I just want to show you on the paper, um, just to show you what we do. So I'm literally going to draw around the top of the coat hanger and down the sides. And that is basically my pattern. So I'm going to cut this out maybe half an inch bigger all the way around. So where the coat hanger, so I should have got a big piece of paper, where it goes down the side like this is where my fabric's going to go, but I'll need to be half an inch bigger all the way around like that. That's not set in stone. We're not making something that you need to wear, so it's not imperative that that's a half inch. It would be quite nice if it's symmetrical though. So let's, let's do this on the fabric. Um, but if you've got a smaller hanger, was it Mel? who messaged in saying you've got a child's coat hanger. That's fine. You're still going to draw around the coat hanger. So if you've got a 12 inch coat hanger, if you go on this bigger than this, um, the fabric measurements that I've given you are for a 17 inch. So whether it's wooden or whether it's a flocked one like this, um, that's 17 inches across. You might need a bit of extra fabric if it's bigger. But if your coat hanger's smaller, so if you are doing a child size one, which would be very cute, um, then you're just drawing around it. So, um, so you don't need, oops, there you go. Um, you make your own pattern, basically, is what I'm saying there. So this is the fabric that I'm using, which is rather lovely. Zelda's doing a kiddie's coat. I think that's fine. Um, depends how many pegs you've got, I suppose, doesn't it? So I'll draw it on the lining, first of all. So I've got, this is doubled over, so I've got two pieces of fabric here. And we were measuring what did I put on those measurements? Um, there's the hanger there. So that's 17 inches across, so I need 18 inches here. And I think we're going 17 inches down. And that could be from the top of the coat hanger up here, which is just about in the right place there. So I'd normally use my rope tricker to ruler and mat, but not everybody's got one, so I think we'll just use scissors instead. So I'm just going to take off the selvage first of all. Because we don't deal with that. Hello, Carol and Carolina. So let's chop across here. Tell me if you if you're if you're not keeping up or if you want me to go back over anything, if I don't reply to your message, uh, put it in capital letters or something, shout at me, and make sure I notice it. Alice has just got a pink package. Oh, how exciting. And again, this can be as deep as you want it to be. So if you wanted an, a narrower bag, uh, like so. In fact, we went 16 inches this way, didn't we? I got that bit wrong. Um, but if you wanted it longer, if, if you wanted it narrower, you might be struggling to get the coat hanger in, to be honest. Um, so I would have your fabric at 16 inch minimum, but you can make this bigger at this point if you wanted to. If you wanted to go 17, 18 inches, if you wanted to use this as um, 
I don't know, storage for keeping your fabric in or something like that, or laundry, then you may want to make it very, very long. But we're doing peg length. But if you want to make another one and you want to make it longer, that's, um, that's entirely up to you. So I'm going to go 16 inches from the top of my coat hanger. which is there and do you know what I'm going to do I'm just going to put a mark on there and I'm using a biro but you won't see this and I'm just going to fold this so that I know that it's square and just give that a finger crease Pauline's back from walking the dog Pam's using a child's hanger but making it longer for storing socks that would be a good idea. And yes, you could applique names on it. That would be fabulous. Right, so I'm going to draw around the coat hanger. Normally I'd use um, an erasable ink pen, but I really want this to stand out, so I'm just using a bearer. I'm going to move that over to the side a little bit. And I'm leaving about, about half an inch here. Draw around the top of your hanger. It's ever so easy. Is that straight? You know it's symmetrical because your hanger will be symmetrical. And I'm just going to trim this down. So that's where the line would be. I want it about half an inch wider. So that's where I'm going to cut. Okay, so from the edge there and around here. Are we making sense so far? Morning, Caroline. Scarves and gloves is a good idea to store. There's loads of things. I mean, it's, it's quite nice as well because you can use um, unallocated storage spaces, if you like. So um, back of doors, places like that, back of the bathroom door for your washing or bedrooms. Um, make it in um, a, a children's um, type of printer fabric and then you could have this to keep toys or the kids lawn. might encourage them to keep the room tidy um, so yeah, there's loads you can do with it and again it's really really easy you're not taking up too much fabric coffee oh that would be very nice thank you anybody else <laughs> no, no doubt thank you <laughs> I'm having a nice cup of Chris and Terry. I'm calling it a cup of Chris and Terry because Chris and Terry sent me some really lovely um, coffee and a very nice letter as well and a little card I've got at the back there. So my cup of coffee on a Saturday morning has been renamed a cup of Chris and Terry. Thank you very much if you're watching. Um, <laughs> you have no idea how many orders you've got here. <laughs> Might be cold by the time it gets to you then. Uh, <laughs> um, oh, loads of you. <laughs> you shouldn't say things like that, should you? Right. Let's take my outer fabric. And I'm going to use the lining as a pattern. This is all the cutting you need to do. I'm going to use that as a pattern to cut out the same from my outer fabric. And I've gone for a nautical theme this morning. <laughs> oh, look, Chris and Terry's as well. Um, right, so let's cut this out. Oh, we've got the boiler working. In fact, it's, it's adding radiators as we speak now. So we have heat in the house at last. It's been about a month with no heating. Couldn't have picked a worse month, really, to have no heating, could we? It's actually been warmer outside than it has inside for the last few weeks. Yes, but we have heat. Excited. I might even be able to have a bath. We've had no hot water. We do have showers. We've had no hot water or anything. It's ridiculous. Right, so let's cut around there. I think a plique would be a, a really nice idea. Make it personal, particularly if you're making this for kids. They like anything with the names on it, don't they? What am I doing there? I've got that folded over. Right, that's it. Um, now I'm using a canvas. 
so it's a nice sturdy fabric. I'm not going to put any interfacing on it because I don't think it needs it for something like this. If you were using a uh, very fine fabric or a lightweight cotton, then, um, oh, bye Sand Sandel. Hi Sandel, see you next time. She's going to work. Um, there may be a bit of interfacing on the back or some H640 or something of that fusible ilk would be good. Um, I've just cut out that carol, so I've got two shapes. Um, didn't cut that very very right, did I? So I have two lining pieces and two outer pieces, all to the same shape. Right, now I need to make an O. So I'll take the lining piece and I'm going to put this right sides together with one of the outer pieces. I'm going to just fold this in half and crease this line. In fact, I'm, I'm going to iron that. Fin crease it if you can, but I just want to make sure that you can see okay. exactly what I'm doing here. <laughs> Lynn used her cookie to heat the house. That's a good idea. Um, Oh, Kim, that would make a nice cushion for your caravan, wouldn't it? That crease. Can you see that crease? I'm going to do it again. We've got all morning, haven't we? Is anybody sewing along? Pan of raisin and coffee. Oh, that's a good idea, Michaela. Yeah, if you're making a, um, a different size then um, yes, do a fitting with your coat hanger. Coat hanger should be able to go in diagonally, you're right there. So when you fit it in, you're going to push it in, shimmy it around and push it up through the hole at the top. Lovely, okay. So that's where I am. Now we need to make an hill. So again, you could, you could actually make that a little bit bigger. I think mine was eight inches, isn't it? Yup. So, where the straight line is there, I'll come down a little bit actually, we're going to draw four inches either side, but let's do four and a half. Let's make a nine inch hole. And then we need to draw a circle around this side. So I'm just going to use is that big enough? If you have a plate, I think I put on the instructions to use a um, to use a plate. That will do. Um, but a, oh, well that's not going to go through, is it? Um, if you have a plate or any kind of circle template, would be ideal to do that. I don't have one with me, so I'm just going to use one of these. Maybe it'll stay in place. Stay in place. All right, as a pen with a deeper thing. My pen's not going in. That's not very good, is it? Right, that should do it. So we need a semicircle around here. That's not doing it. We need a semicircle around here. So I'm going to draw one. Um, but again, if you've got your template, then you're going to use half of a circle there. Like so. And then same on the other side. Like so. Should have asked him to go and fetch me a plate while he was down there, shouldn't I? So there is your semicircle. The next thing we're going to do is to sew around that circle, the semicircle, okay? Yours is going to be perfect. 
Um, oh, this is a seam gauge, um, Amanda. Normally, I think this one's a bit well worn. Um, they're, they're to measure the uh, hems, a hem gauge, sorry, not a seam gauge. Um, but they have a little hole in the end here and they've got a grippy bit underneath there. So when you click that in place, I think I've just worn mine out a bit. Um, you can hold that down and swizzle your pen around and make circles out of it. So that's what I intended to do, but it's gone a little bit wobbly. It's like a wonky street hem gauge. Right, let me just tidy up here a little bit. I'm bringing to machine. do quite a small stitch so I'm going to go down to 2.2 on my machine and we'll sew around the semicircle. So what else have you been up to? Um, thanks Lisa. Godmother's clothes pair. Oh dear, you've disappeared. So messages keep disappearing. So I will go back and read them all afterwards. Promise. Right, so try and keep your curve very curvy. So keep it nice and smooth. I've just shown you a camera that's not switched on. So sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, screen going back is my fault. I press number three and number three isn't switched on. <laughs> oh, Letitia's watching on the telly. Lovely. Okay, so we've sewn all the way around there. Now we're going to cut it out. Um, quite close to the edge, so maybe a quarter of an inch or about five millimetres from the stitch line. Right. Ever use double cap rivets in any of your projects? I can't say I have. No, I'll, have to, I'll put my thinking cap on Julia. Let's see if anyone's got any ideas as to what Julia can use double double cap rivets. Double, double, um, oh, Jane's knitting Easter chicks, how lovely. Right, so if you're careful when you're cutting this out, I don't know what you can do with the piece of fabric that you've cut out, but you've got two semicircles you can do something with. Um, maybe a little bit of patchwork. So let's just cut this out here. Like so, and then into the corners, I'm just going to snip up to the stitches. Like that. Hi, Linda. In Yorkshire, it's cold now. Right. Let us iron this. I'm going to turn it all through that hole now. But I find it easier to just give it a bit of a press away from the hole, first of all. So this is a little bit like those um, letterbox zips, like what I do. Attaching straps to bags, that's a good one, Angela. They, they can be quite decorative, can't they, rivets? They don't have to have a, a purpose. Whoops, ooh, nearly. Okay, then we're going to poke this through. Lisa's made Easter bunting with the kids. Oh, yes, do send me pictures. I'd like to see that. Now we're going to pull this through so that the seam is right on the edge. And press. it from this side because this is the side that you're going to see so nice we've got a top stitch around this as well actually we should do that shouldn't we top stitch around it just to hold it in place and make it look nice I didn't on the other one because you don't have to but I think it would be nice if we did on this one it is a bit like reverse applique you're right Mary only nothing's going behind it. <laughs> Do you know what? I was thinking after I made the first one, it's like a big smile, isn't it? If you're doing this for kids, you could put two eyes on there and maybe a couple of teeth and make a, a big monster mouth. <laughs> 
there we go that will do so now we'll just top stitch around the hole so I can lengthen the stitch a little bit here so we'll go up to a go to a three Ooh, the foot pedals disappeared off into the corner stop with the needle down while we pivot oh look I've run out of bottom thread oh you'll have to bear with me a minute now I thought I'd uh, I thought I got enough I need to reload to refuel so talk amongst yourselves for a minute while I just do this that'll do I'll have some of that so Julie's got her rivets on bag straps and on the folds in a purse. That's a nice idea. Oh, hello, Lakbia from Kenya. Haven't heard from you for a while unless I missed your messages. Oh, hi, um, hi, Jewel. I do read all of your messages afterwards, honest. Um, it, it, in fact, ooh, it takes up the rest of my Saturday. I really enjoy it. Don't you love these Saturday mornings? And, and particularly the half yard club, we're having a little bit of a sew along. Anybody joined up first time this morning? Got any questions about the half yard club? Then come and ask them. If I miss you, I'm sure we've got a few hundred of you watching anyway, so I'm sure somebody's going to answer you. Oh, that's another thing on the website as well. There is an Ask a Member page. So. I'm literally I have hundreds of questions a day or comments a day between YouTube and Facebook and emails and website and half yard club so it takes me a while sometimes to get round to them um, but if you post a question on there um, if I don't get to you then somebody else will but it's quite nice to have that community kind of feeling isn't it where you've got other like-minded people and they're all making the same things and somebody there to answer your questions. I like all of that kind of thing. Particularly at the moment when everything is quite insular, isn't it? So you're sitting sewing at home on your own. You know, you, you're not on your own, really. I think I love about these lives as well. Hi, Sarah. She's new here. <laughs> Thank you, Sally. Um, no, this is so nice. And what I love as well is when I'm looking at, um, at the comments, I've, I've got two screens, one with Facebook and one with YouTube on, so I'm trying to, I'm trying to catch it between both of you. But it's when you start talking to each other. And I feel like I'm kind of eavesdropping in on conversations, but it, it's, 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 it's like having a party line. Do you remember party lines on your phone years ago and you could hear other people's conversations? Um, but where you can actually join in. <laughs> Oh, Denise, I, I don't know whether threading my bobbin is a bad habit of doing it that way. It's what my mum always used to do, so that's just what you do, isn't it? As long as you pull the thread so it's got a bit of tension, so it's not too loose. I think you just get used to feeling how tight it should be, if that makes sense. And that's an awful lot quicker than undoing and rethreading and all of that kind of thing. So I don't know whether I should be recommending loading your bobbin that way. <coughs> Excuse me. But I do it anyway. Um, no, Sarah, we've, got, we've, we <laughs> we've had confirmation. J just for anybody that didn't know, we're, we're moving house. We've sold our house. We've sold it in two days. And we've got nowhere to go because we can't find anywhere we like. Um, so we've got quite a, a broad area like the whole of the south of England. Uh, and in all of that area, can't find anything. But uh, we've, we've got a few days. It'll be fine. Something will come up, I'm sure. There's always tents. <laughs> Thanks, Kate. It's a oh yes, Alex. So, sorry, everyone's replying to Joe. Anyway, that's what we have. Is anybody sewing along? Have I missed any comments? Or are you going to do it later? Um, and that's on the reverse side. So now we start sewing the whole thing together. So we'll have the two outer pieces right sides together, like so. And I'm just going to sew a little way across the bottom to hold this together. Do you know, loading bobbins up, Amanda, to me, it's like putting petrol in the car. I really don't like doing it. It's got to be done. 
So I'm with you. I will load up. I would load a load. Roll. Lo oh, what's the word? Fill. A whole load of bobbins all at the same time. And it, it's always like, unless you've got one of these fancy sewing machines that uh, alerts you when you're about to run out. Um, I always forget. Well, I never notice. And and particularly when you're sewing something big and you get halfway through your pair of curtains and you realise you haven't sewn anything. It's, oh, it's so frustrating. Oh, sidewinders. Yeah, we've got some sidewinders coming on the website, actually. Um. <laughs> like so, Julia. Has it done it again? Like so. Apparently I'm reverberating. Oh. Carol Bennett, in the naughty corner, please. We don't have cleaning on a Saturday morning. You know the rules. So I'm just going to sew... Just, uh, just in a second turn it basically that's going to be where my turning gap is which may seem a bit odd that I'm sewing up the turning gap but it'll make sense in a bit oh I've still on a long stitch and we've got shorter so that'll do there and then we'll need to put the lining on as well this is the bit that I always get mixed up <laughs> So those two right sides together, linings right sides together. And then I'm going to sew all the way around, but not over that little bit that I've just sewn. <coughs> Excuse me, I've got a real tickle in my throat. That sounds awful, doesn't it? <coughs> Uh, <laughs> Debbie time. Sabine's husband calls this Debbie time. Kind of like that. Oh right, LS. Let me sh let me put this together again to show you. She's lost track of what side's which. Okay. Do this bit again. So the two outer pieces, right sides together. So I've got my lining attached to the back of this one because that's where I sewed around the hole. All right. And then just sew a little way across the bottom, so maybe five or six inches just across the bottom here. Then I'm going to put the second lining piece on top. Okay. And I'm going to sew it from this side so I can see but I'm going to sew all the way around the edge. I'm going to leave a gap at the top so I can get the coat hanger hook in. And then around the side and <coughs> across the bottom. Welcome along, Erica, for the first time live. So is that okay? Is, are the layers making sense? It is a peg bag, Eve, yes. Anybody from Cape Town watching says tomorrow. <laughs> Sharon's making a pavlova at the same time, multitasking. Right, so just where I left that gap, all the way around, but don't sew over that, okay? So I'm just lining up where I stopped sewing and start again here. And around we go. I'm just using, oops, <laughs> so my foot pedal keeps disappearing be in the next door neighbour's garden before long. Then I'll be doing the splits. So around about a half an inch seam allowance or just over a centimetre seam allowance. Around the curve here. And up to the top. When we get to the top, we're going to stop sewing and reverse and leave a gap of about half an inch or so, about a centimetre, and carry on sewing. Right, do we need to wait for anybody to catch up? Let me know. Yes, Sarah, we will be near a Kim. So seeing as we're working together almost every day, it's, it's getting to be a bit of a journey, either me going down to the office or her coming up here. When we're allowed, of course. So I'll be nearer office and nearer Kim, which is great. In fact, I shall be nearer my eldest son as well. 
depending on whereabouts in the country we move. So that would be nice. So hopefully by the summer I'll get to see more of the grandchildren. Right, so I'm back to where I started, but not over that first stitch line, okay? Then, oh, hi, Bob. You don't normally come down here. Hello, sweetie. Right, so that's what I've got. Um, the scissors. I'm going to chop across the corners. Tinmouth is beautiful, Lisa. I can remember having um, scones at yours and ice cream, didn't we? It was wonderful. Um, right, then we're going to turn this the right side out. More eggs making Easter chicks. <laughs> Christine, I'm, I'm thinking what's a leg bag. I should, I should be making one of these leg bags. Oh, hi, Joe. Glad you're enjoying it. Bobbin's good. She's... Um, um, she's getting there. It's, it's funny when she's walking, or if she's running in front of, because she's she's going for walks and everything now, which is great. Um, she looks perfectly normal, but she's not actually putting enough weight on the bad leg. Um, and you can tell when she stops because she leans a bit to one side. Her bad leg's just on the toe. So I don't know whether that's just because it's a weaker leg or whether it still hurts. So I don't know. But she's getting. It's taking longer than we thought, but she is getting over it. Thank you for asking. Yes, Helen. This is. Next month's project, should I show you? Yeah, next month's not very far away, is it? Um, this is next month's main project for the Half Yard Sewing Club. Um, and yes, it has got a little washing line on the back and there is a video for it, but it's a member's project. So you need to be a member of the Half Yard Club to be able to make it. It's a wonky doorstop. I love it. <laughs> I would have been quite happy to do something wonky every month, but I think the, uh, the girls in the team are a bit, no, I think we should move away from wonky. I may do a wonky gingerbread house at Christmas time. But it's, oh, I don't know what that was. Um, but it's really easy. Oh no, I don't want to end that. <laughs> Sorry, I've, I've just um, dropped wonky house on my keyboard and I was just about to cut us off Facebook, but we don't want to do that because we haven't finished yet. Okay, let's turn this through. Where are we? So when you turn it through the first time, it will be inside out. But the nice thing about doing it this way is you've got no raw edges on the inside. I'm not a raw edge fan myself. So you've got that and then you've got the hole at the bottom. Now, ideally, you should be hand sewing that closed because what we don't want to do is sew over this seam because then you're going to see the stitches on the outside of the bag and we don't want to do that. If you're very careful, you should be able to machine sew if you just fold over. Do you see what I'm doing? Um, that's the outside seam. If I'm going to close this over like I would do a handbag lining, I'm actually trapping the outer fabric inside the seam and it's going to make a pucker. But if I can fold the seam over so I can see where that seam is and just sew along the seam allowance and not the outside bag, we should be okay without seeing those stitches on the outside. Am I making any sense at all? In my mind it does. Right, so right across the edge on the inside of that stitch line. Excellent. So ideally, you could hand sew that. I'll trim off the bits. Then we can turn this outside again. Is it quite long and a zip in the bottom? That's a good idea. Oh, a zip in the bottom is a really good idea, Wendy. I like that idea. So let's turn this all through. We're almost finished now. It's a quick one, wasn't it? It's only 22. Poke out the corners. I've got a, an appropriate thing to poke with that isn't a pair of scissors. Okay. 
much ago. We're getting busy, busier and busier. Can we see the one behind me? Oh, is that the wonky? I can't reach it. Um, who is that? Jackie. <laughs> Um, and I'm not being lazy because I can't get up. I'm, I'm actually tethered to my um, equipment, if you like. I still haven't got my remote um, um, thing, microphone. So I'm tied to it. So I can't, I can't actually get that far back of this there. That's it's quite a long way back. It's exactly the same as that one, just a different colour. Um, what I did for you, that one doesn't have the round window, um, but you can put extras on. So we've got a little... Um, like roof at the back there you could put those on the front if you wanted to instead i thought it might be quite nice to put a number of a house on there if that's um, you know, your house number um, i didn't put window boxes on the side windows but you could add those with the grass uh, or the um, the plant the plantage that's just free motion embroidery scribbling scrib scribbling scribbling over and over again um, but you could put some little french knots on there and add flowers or do some more free motion embroidery and do that as well um, you could do flowers coming out of the grass it's just something that you can have so much fun making you don't have to have the washing line if you don't want to you could cut an extra fence to go across the back um, you know you make this whatever you want it to be really personalize it um, I love the roof on that as well you could actually cut scallops out and stick them down like tiles so that's the basics of what you've got and that's the pattern and that's the video but if you wanted to add other things to it I don't know a bird on the roof or something like that then I think it lends itself to to being personalized so I'm, I'm glad you like that i think that's gone down quite well hasn't it um the, the only thing with the french knots i find um because i've used um bond web um to stick all of the applique on and it makes it really difficult to hand sew through it so thimble i would recommend if you're going to do some embroidery on there too oh. margaret's making masks this morning right So let's push that out. Let's let's give it a press before we get this hanger in, make it look nice and neat. <coughs> like the idea of the French. Yeah, I think you get really carried away. You know, it depends depends how much time you've got to work on something, doesn't it? But if you've made the wonky street cushions already, that's going to make a really nice kind of display, isn't it? Whatever room you're going to put them in. Hello, Amanda. Oh, a mouse mat under the foot pedal is a good idea. I was going to, um, I was going to try and make something, but that seems a bit easier. Push out the curves. The coat angle will push all of this out anyway in a bit. Tell you what would be quite funny. I was saying about putting eyes on the front and making a face of it. You could put some applique on the lining inside, so it looks like there's there's something in there. I don't know, a mouse or a rabbit or something, squirrels. That's a nice idea, Lorraine. You could have the whole washing line all across the front of the peg bag. That would work well. Let's just push that top out. And press that and make it nice. Remember to switch you off. Oh, Susan. Other half's talking. Ugh, on a Saturday morning. Should be banned. Right, let's put this inside, see how we go. So that needs to squish inside there like that and it's a bit of a wiggle but you need to find the hole that you left at the top which is there i'm not going to hem that or hand sew it or anything like that that's just going to go in there like so and then what i did with the other one just took that in and make it neat didn't press that quite straight um was just to tie a bow around the top did I bring ribbon down here? So you think you're all all good? I could make one, couldn't I? I've got time. I'm going to make a ribbon. Um, just in the lining, let's do that. So it's, it's doubtful that this is ever going to come off the coat hanger. Um, so what I do like to do is a little blob of glue, just something like HT2, just on the top there. And that'll stop the frayed edges from coming out and then tie a ribbon around the top just to make it look nice. So let's let's do that. Let's make a ribbon. So I'm going to cut a piece of fabric 
say three inches wide and we can make it quite a nice long one couldn't we that's a bit too long by 13 inches no 40, 15 inches that's I'd say that was 15 inches shall we see how accurate I am oh 20 inches and five inches out with that one all right hi Dietza a bit late today she says I hope it wasn't the housework um right so I'm going to fold this in half just like making piece of bias binding and then I'm going to fold the center the the long sides to the center piece I've got a piece of fabric or a piece of ribbon which is going to be just under an inch wide about three quarters of an inch is wide Nedette, have a look back. That's the um, the wonky house half yard club pattern. Right. So again, long size to the centre, and then the whole thing in half again, and that's going to be the width of my ribbon. Actually, I hadn't got ribbon that matched perfectly anyway, so this is quite a nice idea to, to make something that you know is going to match. Lois, I don't... Uh, the, the way that I made that one, because I did think about boxing corners, couldn't figure out how to do it. I'm sure you could, but with sewing the bottom first, the lining's kind of attached to it, so if you box the bottom, you're going to see raw edges on the inside. I wouldn't less you did it that way so you could box the bottom and sew across there and instead of cutting it off fold that up and put a button on it then you've got a box bottom that would work without showing any raw edges I'm not a raw edge fan myself right now what we're going to do here is to neaten the ends um, so where I folded it across this way I'm going to open this up and fold it back that way and sew straight across the end and then we'll do the same on both ends like that oh didn't go all the way there And the same on this side. Hi, Joanne in Texas, seven o'clock in the morning. So again, that's folded over, open it up, fold it back on itself, and sew straight across the top. A French thing might work, Julia. A wonky street bag. Oh, Deborah. That's a good idea. Right, so that's what I've got there. And then we're going to flip this out so I've got a nice neat seam at the bottom. And the same on that end. So I'm not cutting off the corners or anything like that, just pushing that out. <coughs> Excuse me. And then I'm going to sew all the way around. I'd normally use the same colour thread but We'll be here all day if I'm changing thread as well. So I'll just sew round in a big rectangle. Oh, see you, Louise. Louise has got to go. Thank you for joining me this morning. It's, it's been a lovely morning this morning, I think. You must post pictures as well. I know you can't on YouTube, but you can on Facebook. So it's lovely to see some of your pictures. Um, I was asking um, to see your Wonky Street cushions the other week and I, I, I had such a big smile on my face when I saw them. It's really lovely to see what you've been making. Right, so literally down the corner and around all the sides. Good idea for bag storage. Who was that? That's Joanne. Morning Irma in Texas. We've got a few of you in Texas this morning. Morning, Anne. Trying to sew as I'm reading. 
I'm glad you like the paper bag, Debbie. Oh yes, clocks change tonight, don't they? That's come around really quickly. We lose an hour, don't we? Is that, is that everywhere? I presume that's... Is it worldwide? Does everybody do that? Are you doing that in Texas? Do you put the clocks forward tonight? Let's snip off those ends. And then we'll tie this around the top. That finishes it off quite nicely, I think. Have I completed a tu tutorial on Wonky Street? Um, yes, I have on the website, on the Half Yard Sewing Club website. Um, who was that? Sorry, you've gone. How to make the iron station. I've already done that, Jill. That is on my Facebook page. And it was the 2nd of January. That will do, won't it? That's quite a nice job. Tie that nice and tight. So if you've got a ribbon already, then that would be fine. Just think that's quite nice because it matches. There, and that's finished. Um, is there a friend of mine missed a flight from the US? Oh, missing a flight because of the time change. That's a nightmare. Um, spring forward and fall back, that's the way. Um, Chris has just made a first live. Just about to finish, Chris. Um, but thanks for joining us. Um, your clocks went forward two weeks ago. Wow, no clock change in South Africa. I don't like the clock changes. Well, I don't, uh, that's selfish, isn't it? I don't mind the one in the autumn because you gain an hour. I don't like losing the hour myself. Um, next weekend, the clocks go back an hour in Australia. Glad you like it, Kit. Thank you, Lynette. Oh, lovely. Okay, now remember, if you do want to join up with, uh, oh, I'll show you that, look, that's it done. And then again, I've loved the ideas that you've been coming up with of maybe putting a zip in the bottom and a laundry bag and making it bigger or somewhere to keep your socks and stuff like that. Um, I just think it's going to be a, a really useful storage bag, not just for pegs or clothes pins. So I'm glad you've liked it. Um, if you wanted to join it with Half Yard Sewing Club today, do you remember you get a whole month free if you join on the monthly option. It's £5.99 a month or however that translates or converts in whatever currency in whatever country you are in. This is for anybody anywhere in the world. You'll need to, you need a computer and you'll need a printer or access to a printer because one of the projects every month at least will have a a pattern that you'll need to print off and the reason that we do it that way and not post things out is because we can accept um, people from all over the world which I think is lovely if we had to start posting things out then the price would go up and it would kind of cut off a lot of countries that we can't post to so that's why we do it this way um, and it's it's so uh, it's so nice to see so many of you from all over the world as well so we're getting quite big um, we'll have some news next month hopefully about a new website so nothing's going to change as far as you're concerned. Um, it's just the uh, the backbone of it, if you like, is going to be um, made a little bit stronger. It's, um, it's going to be a little bit more efficient, shall we say. So that's really exciting times as well. Um, I think we're up to date with everybody there. Susan's going to give it a go. Lovely. Thank you, Debbie. <laughs> And it's growing, not not just in the amount of people that we have in the club, but the amount of um, projects and techniques. You'll also have the same amount of projects, but you will have about 36, including the, the block of the month. Um, but the techniques pages and working with different fabrics and ideas pages and all that kind of thing, those are growing every month as well. Um, so, yeah, thank you. Oh, OK, so for Half Yard Club, I should see you again here on Facebook next month, the last Saturday in the month, can't remember what date. Um, I shall see you if you're around on Wednesday afternoon at 2 o'clock on my website, which is Debbie Shaw Sewing. And uh, next Saturday, YouTube at 11, Facebook at 11 on my Facebook page. We're going to be here twice a week for you. So uh, do come and join us if you can. It'd be nice to spend some time together. Meanwhile, thanks for being here with us today, and I shall see you again very soon. You take care. Bye-bye.